Grainne Whale, the Pirate Queen of Ireland, was no mere tale of Irish folklore, but a historical figure who in her own right would become a legend. She was born Grainne Niwalia, of Grace O'Malley in English, around the year 1530 into the Iwalia clan, a great seafaring clan at the time. Clan O'Malley rose to power in the 14th century in the west of Ireland, with strongholds in Clue Bay and Ackle Island. They taxed anyone who tried to fish off their coasts, and were not averse to pirating ships trading in Galway Bay. They were also known to have traded with coastal areas in France and Spain. As the daughter of the clan chieftain, she would have been quite high on the social nobility ladder at the time. She would have been well educated, and learned to speak Latin, and likely also spoke Spanish and French due to her family's travels and trading activities in both countries. Legends say that as a young girl when her father wished to set sail for Spain on a trading mission, Gronje wanted to sail with him. Her father refused, explaining that her long hair would get caught in the ship's ropes. Angered by this, she cut off all of her hair both to embarrass her father, and that so he would no longer have any excuse not to take her. This event is what earned her the name Grainne Whale. Whale meaning bald in Irish, and it is by this name that her legend would grow. When her father passed away, Grainne would inherit all of his lands and titles, and become head of Clan O'Malley. This despite having an older half-brother. As clan chieftain, she would seek to grow her fleet and influence both on land and sea, and would become one of the last strongholds to resist English rule in Ireland. She married her first husband, Donal O'Flaherty, in 1546, increasing her lands and power further. Together they had three children, Owen, Maeve and Murroch. Donal, however, would die nine years later in an ambush while hunting in 1565. But by this time, Grainne Whale had proven herself a great and fierce leader in her own right, and still commanded the loyalty of many of Donal's men. They continued to follow her even after she decided to move her new headquarters to Clare Island. After Donal's death, local legends say that she took a shipwrecked sailor as a new lover. However, this was only a short, brief romance as he was soon killed. Seeking revenge for this, she attacked the castle of Duna, and killed her lover's murderers. Her attack on Duna Castle was said to have been so bloody that she earned a new nickname, the Dark Lady of Duna. Another legend says that once while on a visit to Dublin, Grainne Whale wished to visit Hout Castle. However, on arrival, the gates were closed and she was told the lord of the castle was not accepting visitors as he was having dinner. Grainne Whale was not a woman to be refused. She was angered and kidnapped the lord's grandson. The ransom she demanded for his release was that Hout Castle must always keep its gates open to unexpected visitors, and that an extra place always be set at the dining table for every meal. Lord Howth agreed to this and gave Grainne his ring as his pledge on the agreement, and to this day his descendants still honour said agreement. Grainne Whale would marry her second husband in 1566, Richard Burke, and with him would have her fourth child Theobald. But by the late 16th century, English power was slowly increasing across Ireland, Grainne would fight to prevent her power and lands being encroached upon. In 1593, her sons Theobald and Murroch were taken captive by the then English Governor of Connacht, Sir Richard Bingham. Grainne Whale would set sail for England to directly petition Queen Elizabeth I for their release. When she arrived in London, Elizabeth agreed to meet her at Greenwich Palace. And when this meeting took place, she was surrounded by the guards and Elizabeth's royal court. Grainne was said to have worn a fine gown which surprised those in attendance expecting a rough, dirty pirate to appear. 
When she entered, she refused to bow to Elizabeth, as she did not recognise Elizabeth as the Queen of Ireland, and regarded their meeting as a meeting of two queens, placing herself as Elizabeth's equal. Gráinne was searched by Elizabeth's guards who found a dagger concealed in her gown. Gráinne explained that she carried it only for her own protection and that she meant Elizabeth no harm. This reasoning was accepted by Elizabeth and the meeting was allowed to take place. Some accounts of this meeting say that Gráinne sneezed and was given an expensive lace handkerchief by a noblewoman in attendance. She blew her nose with it but quickly threw it into a nearby fireplace, shocking and angering those in attendance, who considered it an expensive gift. But Gráinne said that in Ireland a used handkerchief was considered dirty and must be discarded and destroyed immediately, no matter how expensive or cheap it was. The discussion between Gráinne and Elizabeth took place in Latin, as this was the only language the two had in common, as Elizabeth did not speak Irish, and Gráinne did not speak English. After a lengthy talk an agreement was reached, that Gráinne would stop supporting Irish rebellions and in return her sons would be set free and Sir Richard Bingham would be removed from his governor's position in Ireland. While all seemed to have gone well, not long after the meeting took place Elizabeth broke the agreement and returned Bingham back to Ireland. With Elizabeth having broken her word Gráinne saw no need to keep hers, and she returned to supporting the Irish rebellions in what would become known as the Nine Years' War. Gráinne Whale would pass away in the same year as Elizabeth, in 1603, and she is said to be buried on Clare Island. Her life story would be passed down in local folklore and legends, and in the early 20th century, Irish revolutionary Pawrig Pierce would use Gráinne Whale as a symbol of Irish independence in his lyrics the Irish rebel song O Ro Se the Vahawalia. <laughs>